за санаацах нь за өнөөдрийнхөө хэлтэйг юм төр нь англи дээр уулхар шийдлээ ягаад тэгвэл энэ хүн мессежийг магад олон хүмүүс илүү олон хүнд хүрээд монголын шийд ирэн залуу юу гэж боддог тухай одоо илгэмжийн хөргий гэж бацсан үднээс англи дээр шийдчихэ. Okay hello everyone and today's speech I'm going to make in English to make sure that more people going to understand what the young mongol person think about the world and about the thing that speech that I'm going to make today. Uh, my name is uh, Zolbayar and or by the project what I'm doing people call me Amai and I'm son of Jambal Suren I belong to the clan of Bat and I have three blood of tribes including Durwood, Old and Halkh and I'm citizen of the Federation of Nomad Tribes which was created 806 years ago by the great Khan of Genghis Khan and I was born in the country called People Republic of Mongolia which is the second communist country after the Soviet Union and my the during my time when i was child the main policy or main education program was to be social to be to be aware of the society and to be aware of the government and believe in one system in 90s when the collapse of the soviet union mongolia get independent and mongolia had to find own way in new world and this all from this moment i'm going to start my conversation the talk about the stress First time when I met stress was in the newspapers in the mid of 90s when Mongolia was uh, shaped by the go- uh, political and economical crisis where the government hadn't any attention on the social awareness and attention on the what's going on with the new society new world because Mongolia had to face the world that we were we were blocked for 300 years after the Manchuria after the Soviet uh, curtain uh, of curtain wall we first time saw the world and that i remember it was beautiful and now after the 70 years of bl- uh, blockade we saw the world it was so beautiful that we forgot that we who we are and on that time we had new and big problem in society which called stress in the government that on that time and until now they don't ha- hadn't any attention on this sickness that causing not only the social a problem is also destroying our culture of being the mongol and in the 90s when the first newspapers came and with the new world stress it's almost affected all society starting from the city people and even now the nomads in even nomads who don't understand what actually this mean they getting this sickness and this is the most dangerous thing that happening with my society or with my country uh, during the uh, 90s and until the 2005 i was doing researching that what making changing the my society my country which was used to be the one of the most beautiful country with the best people with one of the west uh, best welcoming culture and this change uh, this change made me make a lot of question about this cause this problem causing so much dis- dis- destroying my culture and to, until the 2005 i made research in the, by the in, internet and i found about the stress and they told me that stress is kind of a uh, sickness that came from the adaptation problem when the people adapting to the problems and when they cannot solve the problem they having stress and that was the official um, information that i could get and there was so many studies about the stress how what kind of chemicals effects in the brain or what kind of problem people having but there was nothing explaining for us for mongol people to find the cure because without knowing the origin of the problem without knowing the uh, how it goes we will not find a cure and our government or the minister of health or any social organizations didn't work at all for to uh, translate this sickness that causing almost every second or third person in mongolia and my my job in 2005 to go around the world was a lot of research around the world to find many questions like what is life what is time what is the civilization or and one of the questions or research was the stress i st- uh, the, but before this 2005 traveling i went to japan i lived in tokyo i went to united states living in sh- chicago to find to try to understand what actually this meaning because kind of the the words that what i found on the internet didn't explain to me what causing the problem what is the stress why the all around the world people having stress and united states especially they have very high rate and especially in japan too because they also had a very high rate of suicide in the world japan and sweden 
And my, I, I start to ask people questions like, what do you think about stress? What does it mean? Because in Mongolia, if I go to any driver, any worker, any nomad, they will know what is stress. They will explain to me that they, have, they are stressed without knowing what is meaning. But they will say, oh, I don't have money and I have stress, or I have too much job and I'm stressed, or they, would, any, they will connect this word to anything that relates to the stress and without understanding what meaning. United States, I spent three months just to researching, asking people, asking, meeting people, locals, starting from up, like any, any label, any group. And I found that the country, it's very easy to recognize if in the country there is a stress or not by the entertainment. If in the country have the highest, very high developed entertainment, it means that people need entertainment because people need to go out from the stress. And the United States probably the one of the and on the least first country who have the highest rate of the stress. It's why they have the highest like popular the entertainment. Another second thing was the alcohol or any kind of drugs that makes people relax. And by the alcohol, Mongolia get in the 90s had a very big problem with alcohol because we hadn't main main policy or we hadn't anything to do with we didn't know how to protect ourselves from the stress because of the lot of information were coming through our mind and we couldn't digest that problem. And the third thing was, uh, okay, the third thing I will continue later. First, my vis uh, when I returned back from the United States, after seven months, I made my decision to go around the world. And that time I was planning to go spend two years and travel for two, 22 countries as a badarchin. Badarchin meaning in Mongolian that person who live all natural life needs or greed and just to have cup that you can get water and food and don't need anything else, just to have to find the answers for the questions. And my plan was two years, but after visiting Europe, I decided to make more longer. I, I wanted to visit Middle East and all Africa. My journey continued in 70 countries, and it was almost 1,800 days being alone, being homeless, being a stranger. But I found many answers that I was researching, that I can spread, I can I can transfer to my people, to can, I can tell to my people. And one of them was stress. Stress, third country where I, where I visit was Sweden. Sweden, in the socialist time, when Mongolia were trying to build communism and socialism, we used to believe that Sweden is the number one country that, who have the best socialist system. And we believe that if we will reach the top, we're going to live like in Sweden. And I really, on that time, when I was a kid, I used to believe too. And when I visited Sweden, Sweden had that problem stress is one of the highest in the world because of the suicide rate and because of the alcohol abuse. And in Sweden, probably the only one country in the world that uh, government have license of all selling alcohol. It means that all stores owned by government and government control all tax and all system. And my question was why? Why the country that's supposed to be the one of the most developed, most social life and most beautiful country have to have such a big rate of suicide or problem with the mental. And I thought maybe it's stress is related to development because I see that in Tokyo, which is the most developed country in the world, developed city in the world and have the highest rate of stress. In Friday, Saturday, if you go out in Tokyo, you will find out why I, I, I thought about it. And somehow stress is, I thought, related to the development by this major. But I wanted to know more because I'm not actually the researcher of the, I'm not a psychiatrist, I didn't study for this, but I just want to know simple answer for this issue that actually causing or actually destroying my culture that every day, every month, every year I go out and I get confused in my home country. And after the Sweden, there was, uh, I visited Western Europe countries, Italy, and after I decided to go to Middle East and just being on the border to Syria, I was a little bit afraid because I thought that this country is a lot of terrorists, they're going to cut my throat and it's like very bad people. Just because the media, the, the biggest, strongest media in the world, they told me, they told me this information and I was afraid. But now, when people ask me like which country or which people, which country people are the best for you, and I, ask, I say that that was Syria. In the Syria, I didn't find any symptoms of the stress. No, any symptoms of the stress. I'm talking about 2006. It's before the creation of the Facebook and before the revolution or civil war. 
why I'm talking about Syria, because people were there so calm, so relaxed, and it was one of the most safest places I ever traveled around the world and, until now. And my question there was, maybe it's because of religion, because maybe Islam, because Islam makes people pray every day five times. It's been five times per day, all Islam people they have to, a time to be with themselves to be with themselves or to be with God or whatever, they have the time to meditate. And I thought and after traveling Syria, Jordania, Palestine, Egypt or Sudan, in every place where there were Islam, they were quiet, people were very relaxed. And starting from Ken uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, I made 32 countries in Africa by backpacking. And one of the, my major plan was no skipping. Even in the country there is civil war or any unrest, I had to go through the country because it was on my list. I visited almost five of ten most dangerous places in the world on that time where there was civil war, everything, and I passed through it just to know the answer. I went to the Cote d'Ivoire when there was the civil war, in Congo when the civil war, and I had even had chance to have a coffee with the rebels in, during the re uh, war zone. And my question was the same, because I wanted to know what is actually the stress. When I was trying to talk to people, francophonic people, still I couldn't find the stress, because these people had the instinct of survival. Instinct of survival meaning that they hadn't time to think about stress. And I thought maybe stress, have, uh, if you have instinct of survival, there is no stress. That was my question, and I found it. Even visiting the Soweto district in South Africa, which counted one of the most dangerous places in the world, being backpacker there, staying there a few days, and meeting with the local criminals who just killed, just to rob. And I, my question was the same. I just asked, do you have any stress? And they said no. And they said, we live like this from childhood. We don't know what is good life. And just only what we do is survival. And it's mean the people who have instinct of survival, they don't have stress because there is no time to think about stress. And my, my research continued, and there were so many questions that on not only the stress about life, about love, but stress was one of the major problems that I could see in my country. During my, after the return of, uh, from Euro, uh, Africa trip, three, three years spent in Africa visiting village, and in the village there was no stress, but one thing because of the media, international global media were transmitting this information about the stress that Even in the village of Congo or Tanzania, I could meet people who would say, like, hey, I'm very stressed. And I would ask, why are you stressed? And they would say something else, but nothing related to the stress, but just because they think that they are tired, okay, it's a stress. And when I finished the Europe, uh, Africa trip for, uh, after three years, I returned back to Europe. And I started to see Europe in a different way, because in 2005, when I visited Europe, I, I saw only the beautiful streets, uh, beautiful cities that was built almost for two, three, two thousand years. And I saw everything organized. But after returning back af from Africa, from real life, I, I saw Europe in a very different shape, different way. I started seeing people. I started to go around, the, I walk on the street, go to metro, meet people. And I just wanted to see the eyes because by the eyes, I realized that you can see the stress. That the eyes could actually the, show me the picture of the person, what his mood, what his situation. And there was many times when I could see someone's eyes and I said, I could say, like, hey, you have stress? And they would say, yeah, how do you know? And not only because of the red shapes in the eyes, it's just by the movement and everything. And returning back to Eastern Europe gave me a different, different idea, especially in Macedonia when I met, met the local shaman people, because I belong to the culture that shamanism is the major belief. I asked the people, I said, do you know what actually the stress? Because I'm actually, it's almost 60 countries and I almost spent two year, four years and two months asking the same question from everyone to everyone to find. And the local people, their family was one from the Eastern Europe, a husband from Eastern Europe and wife from the Western. Wife is German and husband is Macedonian. And wife told me that stress is something you live in unnatural social uh, standard. It means like if you have to meet so many people, this is the cause and it's the stress. But the man, he told me that stress is actually when you don't feel. And that was kind of one of the 
answers that I found, and I had to build all this information from Africa, from Middle East, from Asia, from the United States. And when I returned back home to write my book, I started to collect the whole information that I met people. And I, have, I found that actually the stress is the sickness that not translated because nobody needs to translate it first. Second is not explained because it's economically it's very profitable. If I take the United States, they have highest rate, uh, they have like so much entertainment because people need entertainment and this all goes to the tax, need to drink a lot of alcohol. And most importantly, what I didn't tell before, there was a lot of drugs involved, not, not illegal, it's illegal drugs, which you have to go to the psychiatrist, you have to go to someone who you don't know, tell to him the problem that you have, and after they're going to write you a prescription of drugs, and these drugs is the highest uh, selling thing in the United States. Almost in every second family I could find these drugs, uh, which is, inst I could go and ask what kind of pills you take, antidepressant, anti-stress, and inside the, uh, what is uh, inside, I could find opioid, opioid, which is the real drug, which is illegal in the United States, and my question was again, how, why it's illegal ingredients in the pill that is legal, why, how would they get the ingredient which is illegal? And this co caused lot, made me a lot of questions about the global policy, international relationship, but I will leave it. And I, when I returned home, actually I had this problem by myself. That the question that I hadn't, four years and six months of my traveling, 1,600 days, in no one time I had any, any stress symptoms because, I, well, first of all, I was in the level of survival because I every day I had to think about how to survive. Even in, during the war time or any other time, I was the stranger that don't know where to stay, where to go. And that helped me to be away from the stress. But returning back, I had real high symptoms of the stress that all what I was researching, and I had to mix... The symptoms that I have and symptoms that I saw around the world, people in Kenya and other other places, and mixed, and I just thought that, okay, now I think I know, and I found how I can translate it into Mongolian language. And I would say to Mongol people now that in stress gidegugig Mongolor orchutxin bol hinlti uchun, hinlti uchun gideg uchun gig bidner stress gide orchutla ato boru nirichig orchutla bidner asutl karatam. And I just translate in my language. It's uh, what I would I wanted to say that stress in Mongolian language have to be translated as a sickness of control. The people who control time, weather, I talk about the weather because people have air conditioning at home, people have trying to control everything, they have problem of the stress. And when I found this problem because stress is first related to the mind, it's a mind sickness, second it's a social sickness. People who live with big society, they have sickness, but people living in little society, village, they don't have this sickness. And third, I found that people who are not related to the nature, that is the main issue about the problem. Because nature, by, by my belief, I'm Tengris, my belief that nature, um, I'm part of the nature, and I have to belong to the nature. And nature has own rules. It's changed weather, it's changed pressure, and it's changed everything. And when we don't communicate with our, our this uh, system doesn't communicate with this nature, that's caused a lot of trouble in our mind, in our feeling, in our spirit. And it's, when, I was, when I returned back home, I just I started writing about the stress, what, how I found the stress, where I found, and I just now, this moment, I want to tell that the best cure is not going to psychiatrists, not drinking alcohol, not drinking the pills daily, lifetime, because that pills, antidepressant, is, have highest addiction. It means that you are one involved, you cannot go out. And I just want, want only one way to cure yourself is go to the nature, to be real and to understand, to feel it. And that will, at least once or twice a week, will help you to survive in the globe, world called globalization. And thank you very much.